Daria is the best depiction of the young writer's struggle that I've yet seen put to screen. Now, she has a hard time being honest about her own feelings, as shown in my previous review of the Season 3 episode, Right Where It Hurts, a classic of the series and one of my most popular videos on this channel. Daria is a relatable show for many reasons, although it doesn't necessarily try to cater to a large audience. Why it's appealing to so many people can be summed up in three points. It treats its world and its characters real, the characters as if they were real people, even if it is sometimes exaggerated for comedic effect. The second reason, it reminds me of an interview I once read with the creator of Dilbert, Scott Adams, a somewhat controversial figure on the internet these days, but if you'll bear with me for the sake of this argument, he once said that when he started the comic, he made the character of Dilbert's boss as weird as he possibly could, so that he would be just weirder than any real person's boss. Yet when he first published it, he got many letters with people saying, he's exactly like my boss. In response, Mr. Adams made the boss character even weirder, and in turn got even more letters. This cycle repeated quite a few times and really illustrates my point that in comedic exaggeration, we can actually make our characters sometimes more relatable. Now, of course, there are caveats to this, there's right and wrong ways to do this, but that's the subject of another video. Suffice to say, I think Daria's characters are very real. They feel real, they feel like real people. And the third reason is it actually mostly sticks to Daria's point of view. Now, there are certainly parts of episodes where they will focus on another character and what they're going through, but it really does mainly portray the events of the show as through Daria's perspective. And I think that actually makes it easier for the writers to portray a realistic world, because when you are writing for one character, because even two characters who are very similar, say Daria and Jane, can have vastly different opinions, outlooks, and takeaways from the events of a certain situation or show or, or, or whatever. In fact, Daria and Jane's differences, the way they see the world differently, is one of the main driving conflicts whenever they have an issue with their friendship. And if these two similar characters can't always agree on, on something like this, then it certainly stands to reason that characters like Daria and Quinn would interpret the show's events as vastly differently. And I find that very interesting, and I think it was a wise choice to frame understanding these characters through how Daria comes to understand characters like her sister better in the show. I think that's very clever, and that's a really good bit of writing. Now, before we get any further into it, I would of course encourage you to watch this episode for yourself if you haven't already seen it. It's on Paramount+, Plus. it's a very delightful episode, and I'm generally a fan of watching something before you go and seek out reviews on it. Unless you're just looking to see if this show is for you, in which case I can tell you yes, it's a fantastic show, I think it's totally worth trying to see if you like it. But with that out of the way, I would like to now give a brief summary of the events of this episode and highlight its main themes. The story of Dee first aired in March 19th of 2001 and was written by Jacqueline Rangold, a fantastic writer from her work on this episode at least. I, I don't know her from a lot of other stuff, but perhaps I should check her out. It is the fifth season of Daria and the fifth episode of that season, and it aired originally on MTV. The main plot of the episode involves Daria writing a short story. We know it's sci-fi, although we don't actually get to read much of the story. And her mother, Helen, being concerned that Daria doesn't have a lot of close friends. She, from Helen's perspective, seems to have a lot of trouble interacting with other people. And this is all exacerbated when Helen's niece, Erin, announces she's going through a divorce. But Rita, if Erin never loved him, why'd she marry him in the first place? This is a big family drama, dredges up a lot of stuff about Helen's relationship with her sister, 
and the way their mother treated them growing up and all of this stuff that is kind of outside the outside of the subject of this episode and draws a lot on other episodes in the series context but i mean you don't need to have seen other episodes to understand this but we won't really be digging into that suffice to say it makes helen more worried for daria in this episode and daria on the other hand is more focused on her writing and she wants to submit a a short story a sci-fi short story to a popular magazine musings magazine musings magazine musings magazine musings magazine they often accept submissions and she's encouraged to do this by her friend jane and her boyfriend tom however after submitting to musings magazine word accidentally gets out that she's submitted and she starts getting attention for it around school and daria is not an attention seeker she does not like really to have people paying attention to her at least for things like this so this is quite a cause of stress for her daria how would you feel if the story you wrote were lost to mankind forever if every last copy of musings magazine you've been published in musings daria what were you saying never mind I think you've said it all. Excuse me? Oh. Oh dear. Um, sorry. The subplots of this episode center around the fashion club who decide they need to gain notoriety by doing a charitable act. And they decide that the best charitable act they could do is to raise money for a new mirror for the girl's bathroom because the current mirror makes them look fat. I have no further comment on this. Thus, they decide to form a fashion newsletter and sell it to people with all of their trendy fashion predictions so that they can raise the money. Besides, why settle for a sign when you can have a plaque? Wow, a plaque? Exactly. Mounted on something appropriate for a beautification. I know! How about a new mirror to replace that awful one in the girls' bathroom that adds at least two pounds? I hate that mirror. Meanwhile, Jake, Daria's dad, is fixated on a play he was writing, a musical, that he was writing in Military Academy. But he was discouraged from finishing it when his teacher, Corporal Ellenbogen, basically said he was worthless and he sucked at writing. So that's pretty horrible to tell a kid, but okay. And he's just really struggling with this episode with trying to find worth in what he was doing and and deciding, you know, Who cares what that guy said in the past? I'm going to try and just write this thing because I want to write it. I'm going to prove them wrong, which is a pretty good motivation to have, I think. I mean, maybe a little unhealthy, but a good sentiment, a good starting point. Meanwhile, following up on the main plot, Daria actually faces rejection. Her letter or her story didn't get accepted. Um, Thank you for giving us the opportunity to read your work. I've been rejected. Musings Magazine sent her a rejection letter, and she kind of takes it pretty hard. This is this is a hard thing for a new artist or a writer to face uh, rejection. You know, it's it's very scary to put your work out there to be judged, and being told you're not good enough or you don't measure up can you know you can take that pretty hard. And it kind of leads to her having a bit of a falling out with with Tom and Jane because you know she's upset, and in the heat of the moment, she kind of blames them for encouraging her to do this. And, it's you know, not enough to get rejected once. You want me to get rejected dozens of times? Come on. It happens to everyone. One try and you give up? Uncle. Daria, you're not listening to what I'm saying. Hey, I listened when you told me to send it in and look what happened. Now you want me to keep submitting it so I can live in a state of perpetual misery? God, you're insensitive. And, you know, unfortunately, being an imperfect human, that is the kind of thing that we do, right? We. We lash out when we're upset instead of facing our own feelings and fears and, you know, that can be really hard. Meanwhile, the fashion club puts out their newsletter, but then when the fashion magazine they all read comes out, it says that all of their fashion advice was wrong and they're utterly embarrassed and humiliated and they buy back all the copies they sold, which they only sold to the boys that like them. None of the girls really seem to care because... I don't think they care what the fashion club thinks. I I just think the fashion club is like, they think everyone cares what they think, but really it's just these boys that like them. And I think the girls just tend to avoid them because they're a bunch of buttheads, you know? So I don't know. I was homeschooled, so I avoided all that. But they decide to buy back all of the unsold copies 
terrified that their enemies will realize they had wrong fashion advice. Nobody cares. Nobody nobody cares about their magazine. In fact, the boys only bought it to impress them, as I said. Uh, but it does lead to the funniest joke in the whole episode. In I conclusion... Go to Good book. Please remember to blush. There must be a lot going on in the boys' room we don't know about. And really, isn't that as it should be? In conclusion, Daria and Jake both kind of realized through a really beautiful scene that it it really, it shouldn't, it does to a lot of us, unfortunately, but it shouldn't matter what other people say about your creative work or your worth as a human being, you know? If making a thing like a musical or writing a story brings you joy, then it was worthwhile. It was, it did have value because it provided value to you. And Daria basically says, look, Corporal Ellenbogen thought that you sucked and you gave up. That sucks. That's a terrible thing for him to say. You should just, you know, you should be writing because it makes you happy. And then has this moment where she's like, oh man, my advice applies to me too. You know, <laughs> we've all been there. It's really a beautiful scene and a, a, a very good piece of writing, I might add. Um, a failure. Dad, you made up one song when you were a teenager and it's not the best thing ever written. And that makes you a failure? Well... That's one of the things. So your reach exceeded your grasp. I'd rather have that happen to me than the opposite. What do you mean? You know what good is. That's how you know you didn't achieve it. That's a lot better than if you were putting out crap and thinking it was great. It is? You came up short because you were aiming high. You're right, Daria. I did. I went out on a limb and took a chance. That took guts, didn't it? Um, yes. Yes, it did. The Fashion Club, in the end, having not raised enough money to buy a mirror do have enough money for a plaque so they purchase a plaque for under the mirror that says that they raised enough money to purchase a plaque i have no comment on this daria and tom you know and jane they kind of reconcile and daria's like yeah i kind of lash out in the heat of the moment and they're like yeah we understand and then we have this really great moment where daria has been just you know eaten up inside about really going through the ringer about this rejection letter, which we haven't actually read until this point in the episode. And I, I want to play this clip for you right now. So just keep in mind, Daria has been distraught about this the whole episode. And this is what the rejection letter says. So you're over the rejection letter? What letter? Oh, wait, you mean the one that said, Dear Ms. Morgendorfer, thank you for giving us the opportunity to read your work. It's not right for us at this time, but please keep us in mind for future submissions. Gee, I'd almost forgotten. That's what it said? To submit again? Yeah, don't they always say that? No, Daria, that's great. My teacher got a one-line note. Musings regrets that your material is unsuitable. Really? Editors never encourage people unless they think they really have something, and that's not often. Let's see if I've got this straight. The editors didn't like my story, they don't want to publish it, but they do look forward to rejecting me in the future, and that's good. Congratulations. It's great to be a writer. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a very positive letter, as Tom points out. This is actually a very good response. His... You know, not everybody even gets that much. And the fact that they want to hear back from Daria, they want to hear more about her, is very positive. And as writers, as artists, as creatives in general, we tend to be our own worst critics. And we can receive a positive bit of feedback and only hear negatives. And so it's good that we have people in our lives that can be like, actually, this is a really good thing you did. You should be proud. I just think that's very nice. And I, I like to imagine that after the show ends, Daria and Jane and, you know, Jody certainly go on to become very influential people who, you know, influence through their art, through their writing, through their creativity, what they have to say. I, I believe everybody has something worthwhile, something of value gained from their life experience and, and the specific things that have happened only to them. And I, I really love hearing about that. I think it's beautiful and interesting and I truly believe that everyone has something worthwhile, many things worthwhile to add to this world. And that's why I, you know, I want people to keep writing and stuff, but uh, I suppose I'm rambling now. So let's move on to the themes. Uh, the episode explores themes of ambition, rejection, personal growth, and the struggles of, you know, being a young adult, especially a young writer or a, a young teen writer, you know? It, 
it can be difficult. It, it can be awkward. It can be hard. But, you know, don't give up. Keep trying. And now that we've gone through the events of the episode, and I've given a lot of thoughts about it as well, and summed up the themes, I did want to take some time just to, you know, give some thoughts and some feedback I had on this episode, some things that I particularly enjoyed. I think it's funny that Jane points out Daria is more comfortable showing her work to total strangers than her own best friend, but that is a very relatable part of being a creative, right? Is, you know, I've had videos or, or webcomic stuff that I've put out online and been like, well, I'm, I don't care. It's, it's random strangers on the internet, right? If they're nice, that's good. If they're mean, who do, what do I care? They're random strangers on the internet. But I've been, you know, nervous to show my family, not because there's anything bad about it, just because, you know, you, you get this fear in your head, like, oh, what if they think it sucks and they hate it, you know? And that's, that is a very relatable thing that I'm glad they chose to include in this episode about a young writer, you know, becoming more comfortable with their work. The next thing, I don't really like to make negative videos. I'll certainly list negatives about a thing in a video, but I don't like to make videos just to hate on something. So I wanted to put this specific thing here. I really don't like Tom as a character. I think he's very icky. I feel like he's very emotionally manipulative. He has a tendency to push people in directions they don't want to go and step on other people's feelings. And when people call him on it, he just acts like you're crazy and he tries to gaslight them into believing it's them and not him. And that's not okay. I think he's a creep. And I think the plot line where he and Daria cheat on Jane is so wildly out of character for Daria. Just absolutely insane. I think the show is like 96% perfect. This is like the 4% where it just like what happened absolutely off the rails insane. But you know, I, I wanted to put that out there. I just don't like Tom. I wanted to, you know, plant my flag on that particular hill or whatever they say, but you know, what are you gonna do, right? I, I love the show. I just think this one thing about it is pretty terrible. But when you like 96% of something, I mean, I think there's a reason to keep it around. Uh, next, next, I really like the scene where Daria and Jane, where Daria is asking for feedback from Jane on her story. And Jane gives some feedback, which she can clearly tell, you know, Daria was a little upset, maybe. She was like, what do you mean it's stiff? I'll play the clip for you real quick. Just say it. You read my story and hated it. What? Where'd you get that madcap idea? Your increasingly desperate attempts to avoid the topic. I didn't hate it. It just seemed, well... The plot felt a little muddled. You think it sucked. Just admit it. It had too many styles or something, that's all. It's okay if you don't like it, you know. In fact, I don't even like it. It stinks. Look, why don't you show it to someone else? Someone who appreciates literature. Someone named Tom. I couldn't show it to him. It's too intimate. Daria, it's about a flesh-eating virus. How is that intimate? You'd think it was pretty intimate if it were eating your flesh. So you saw it there, right? It, Jane kind of says... I'm not really equipped to give the feedback you need. And I think that's very interesting. That actually reminds me of Brandon Sanderson. He's a very popular author. He's one of my favorite fantasy and sci-fi authors. His method of beta and alpha readers is to have a group of beta and alpha readers that aren't versed in the particulars of storytelling, that they aren't like professional writers or even hobbyist writers who know a lot about the craft they're there to provide emotional feedback on the story to say this made me upset or i didn't like this or this was boring or this felt like it was taking too long for them to get from let's say this city to that city and brandon can then take that and his editor can then take that and say okay so they were expecting that the character was supposed to go to the city when really this the plot is about them trying to get to the suburbs and so we need to put in some foreshadowing that makes it more obvious for these readers that it's about getting to the suburbs. So that's taking emotional feedback and a professional writer, artist, whatever, can take that and, and use that feedback and that data to make the story better. However, that does take, that takes skill and experience. And often it, it can take a few people looking over something. Not impossible to do it on your own, but still. That's why he also employs beta and alpha readers who are professional writers or hobbyist writers. They know the craft, and that's also what an editor does. 
is they look over your work and say, okay, so this thing here, you misspelled this word, or you said over here in the lore that they only ride unicycles. However, over here, this guy's riding a bike. That's a very you know obvious example of inconsistency in the canon, but it can be other things like, all right, over here, you're clearly foreshadowing that the characters are going to the suburbs. However, there's still some leftover stuff, maybe from a previous draft, about them going to the city instead. So what if we changed this thing and this character plot point, or this character point, to move them over to the suburbs? That makes the story flow better. So that's where you're getting professional feedback. That's what Daria wants. It. That's what Daria is is seeking here. And that's something that, you know, I mean, in the 90s, right? Like now, it's, you know, the 2020s, you can just go on the internet and find like a bunch of resources that will give you professional feedback. It's very, it's scary to put yourself out there, but you know, it can be very helpful. Daria doesn't really have that. You either, you know, pay an editor or you submit to a magazine and you hope they give you some feedback. And that's kind of what happens to Daria here. She gives the feedback, but that's what she was looking for. And I, I find it very interesting that they put this scene in here. I think it was a really good choice. And I mean, it certainly was interesting to dig into the reasoning why. The Fashion Club is a very interesting group throughout the show. They are very clearly in a toxic relationship with one another and in a bad place. Like these girls are really just bullying each other constantly and it's hard to watch. Not in a way that it's bad writing, just in a way that it's good writing. It makes you feel for these characters. But here's the thing, they're entirely doing this to themselves. Like, they could leave at any point and, you know, find new friends, find people that like them for who they are, but they don't. They they seem to lack the inner strength required to do that or the courage. And that's, that's sad. I mean, that is just sad, you know? But I think it's really important that they included that in the show and in this episode in particular these girls aren't stupid they're they're smart they have intelligence they just choose not to use it or to hide it quinn is shown multiple times throughout the show to be a very smart intuitive capable person but she's so used to playing the fool to playing this vapid materialistic teenage stereotype that oftentimes she almost forgets to use her brain and it's it's sad but it's also very funny because it follows a fundamental rule of comedy where if your characters are miserable it should be because they're doing it to themselves it's not fun to watch a character be helpless to be you know tortured like the road run or like wily e. coyote is except for the fact that he's doing it to himself he could stop at any point and just go to a hamburger joint, right? But he just keeps going after the Roadrunner. The Roadrunner's not doing anything to him. He's doing this to himself over and over again. He could stop at any point, and that's kind of what makes it funny. So it is very amusing to see the fashion club. You know, they're so focused on like, we're the best, we're amazing, we know everything about fashion. That's their whole identity that they've created for themselves. And it just absolutely falls flat on their face. And they're worried that everybody's going to see that and laugh at them. but. The real joke is nobody cares. Nobody cares that the, about their fashion predictions. Nobody cares that they got them wrong. The only ones who care are them. I mean, if somebody cares about that, that would be like the stupidest, most petty, pathetic thing to care about. It would just be such a sad thing to be focused on. And it's really powerful when you think about it. It's depressing and amusing and horrifying all in one and i mean this show really gives depth to even the most shallow of characters really amazing writing another scene i really enjoy is daria encouraging jake giving him a pep talk being like hey it doesn't matter that corporal ellen bogan thought your play sucked the fact that you enjoyed doing it is what made it worthwhile and i mean and you know if you know he didn't appreciate it then you should find you should appreciate it and enjoy it and you should go find someone who appreciates what you're offering and then she kind of gets this look on her face like oh man my own advice applies to me i mean we've all been there right you're given advice and then you're like now i gotta take my own advice 
it's a really good scene. I really enjoy it. I think it's a good way to send the lesson home, if you will. And in the end, you know, we get to see Daria's rejection letter. Throughout this episode, Daria has been absolutely emotionally devastated because she got a rejection letter, because of what's in this letter, because she feels she's not good enough. She didn't measure up. She put herself out there. She opened herself up to failure and the worst has happened and she failed. As writers, as artists, as creatives, we're our own worst critics most of the time. That was a very positive letter, as Tom put it, but she only saw the negatives. She only saw the fact that it was a rejection letter. Not that it was a, we aren't interested right now. Not that it was a keep practicing. We want to see your skill improve. We want to see where you go, kid. You're going places. We want to be in on the ground floor of that talent right there. All she saw was the negative. And I want to just take a moment to talk to the writers, to the artists, to the creatives watching this video right now and say, is that happening to you? Are you receiving feedback and you're looking at your own work? Perhaps you're judging it yourself and saying it's not good enough. I just want to tell you, I mean, does that matter? I want you to improve. I don't want you to give up just because you don't feel like it's not good enough. In fact, paradoxically, because something's not good enough, you can receive a rejection slip. You can not be chosen for that, you know, to win that award, whatever you say. Fine, I'm gonna go and make an even better story. And you do, and you learn from, you know, you learn from the previous story. Maybe you rewrite that story, maybe you make a new story. But eventually this cycle's gonna repeat and you're gonna keep getting better. You're going to improve more and more. And eventually you're gonna put that story out there. Some editor, some, you know, reader, somebody's gonna see that and be like, I like that. I want me some of that. I want this, I love this. Subscribe, publish or whatever it is that you're doing, they're gonna see it and be like, this is good stuff, this really clicks with me. Part of that's being a good writer, part of that's being you know, good at putting your stuff in the right place. All skills that you can build and improve. I believe in you, I believe you can do it. I think anyone with the right mixture of, let's face it, a random chance is part of it, but also perseverance of building up skill and talent. You can do it. My final thoughts on the episode. Like Right Where It Hurts, the story of Dee expertly displays the writer's struggle, especially young writers. The worry that our work isn't good enough, the fear of rejection, dealing with what quite frankly is inevitable rejection, dealing with the fallout of that. For every published writer you see, for every published work they have, I guarantee you there are 10 other unpublished works that got rejected or they didn't feel were good enough to submit. So don't feel like you need to be perfect on your first try. Musings Magazine? Musings Magazine? Musings Magazine? Musings? Musings? Musings. How would you feel if the story you wrote were lost to mankind forever? You know, my mother gets musings and their fiction is awful. I bet you'll have no trouble getting in. Gee, thanks. At the end of the show, Daria is still writing. She's still making stories. She's gonna keep practicing and keep submitting. And I have no doubt that at some point in the future, you know, one of her stories or one of her articles takes off and she hits it big. I really believe that. I believe that her work will have an impact just like I believe your work can have an impact. And, you know, learning from the fall is such an important skill. And sometimes realizing that the fall we took, you know, wasn't as bad as tumble as we thought. It's so scary to show our work, especially before we've received, you know, a few positive reviews or some good feedback and built up a body of work that we can look back on and, and feel proud of and confident that, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I may occasionally stumble or fall or make a misstep, but generally I'm a pretty good writer or artist. It's hard to, it's hard to establish yourself. And, and I don't just mean like as in the industry in regards to other people's success. I mean, to yourself, it's hard to establish your own confidence, but if you keep at it, you can do it. Just keep working, keep working on the next story, the next video, the next song, the next piece of art. Build a backlog, build a library of content that you can look back and be like, I'm really proud of these things. And eventually you're going to look back and eventually you're going to have just finished something and look at it and say, oh, this is really good. I'm proud of this. I believe in you. Don't give up.
Big thanks to the Daria Wiki, which was an invaluable resource in researching this video. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. You can also leave a like and comment below to let me know what you think of this video. And if you're a fan of my comic, Siblings of Steel, you can read it on my website, Webtoon, and Instagram. All the links are in the description below. If you want to support me and get access to exclusive content and early access to my videos, consider becoming a member of my Patreon community. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.